Welcome to Pop Chaos, where the vegetables are farm fresh to you and right to you. Yeah, I'm we, Brian. And I'm Jay, and we ain't talking about eggplant. Well, maybe we are. I don't know. A human eggplant, maybe. Yeah, I was going to say. Uh, so, doing another episode here. Uh, what do we got on the agenda tonight, Ep- Brian? Someone who's been saying certain things without proof. Um, a YouTuber named Spectre Creative. Spectre Creative. Now, I, I'll give a little bit of history on this. We've been talking about this guy, not on the show, but in private. We've been talking about this guy for, mm, I'd say, probably about two years now. Um, yeah. So At least two years. I started watching this guy. Well, both of us did. And at first, you know, I, I thought, okay, you know, might give some some good information. You know, I thought he was okay. And then he started talking about something, and I'm just sitting here scratching my head saying, I don't think that's right. I really don't. And uh, I asked Brian about it, had him watch the video, and he was of the same opinion. I don't think that's right. And what was it that he was talking about, Brian? The ownership of masters of the universe. And, and who owns it? Who owns the rights? And the way he was talking, the, um, the rights were, were, were owned by universal. Right. Because they had licensed out the, uh, characters for animation. Well, I think it was because of the live action movie, wasn't it? <clears throat> Could be. Well, because I know Filmation that- had the rights for the uh, animation back in the day. Um, but I don't understand why he's saying that Mattel doesn't own Masters Universe because they created the fucking thing. Not only did they create it, the packages still say. That um, they own it. As a matter of fact, don't you have one of the packages there? Yeah, as a matter of fact, I got uh, King Keldor, which came, which has a copyright of 2023, and it says Masters of the Universe is owned and copyrighted by Mattel. And if you go to the copyright office and trademark and look at trademarks and copyright. Mattel comes up as the uh, owner of the copyright and the trademark. Well, I was actually Googling while we're discussing, while we're doing our opening here, seeing if I could find a picture of one of the backer cards um, so that we could maybe zoom in and see uh, if we can see the trademark and copyright information and all that. But I'm not finding anything. Oh, I've got, I've got uh, King Randor from last year here also carded, and it says the same thing. Yeah, I just wanted one to put up on the screen. Oh, wait, I may have found one. Well, I just went to heman.org.com. Right, right. Tell's website. For he the official He-Man website. Right. To see what they say. Okay, I got it pulled up right here. I'm going to uh, <coughs> fade that in. All right. What I'm reading right here, and this is the back of one of the card boxes, is uh, copyright 2022 Mattel, Mattel Masters Universe, and associated trademarks. And uh, it's blurry. It's kind of hard to read. And trade something are owned by Mattel and designated U.S. trademarks of Mattel um blah 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 uh so yeah all right right there you can read it on the screen the back of the box says it right there so i'm not sure why this guy is is going out of his way to say these things i mean do you have any ideas because that's just it's crazy to me well according to him mattel had sold the rights in the mid 2000s to another company, which I, this is just my theory. I have no proof on this whatsoever, 
But my theory is he's talking about the distribution rights for the animated series. Or the live action movie, one of the two. Um, which they well, are. He may be talking about all the media rights for uh, He Man. Right, right. I mean, now media, that makes sense. You know, because you got DVDs, yeah. Blu rays, you know, uh, whatever else. I mean, they are reissuing the live action movie this year on Blu ray in a box set, which I need to pre order at some point. Um, I do too. So, I mean, um, that well, makes they, they, Yeah, go ahead. They have the, the I was just going to say, they have the live action movie from 87, they, several animated series, three animated series, four, uh, actually four. five. Yeah, more because you got the original, five. then you got New Adventures, then you got the 2000X, then you've got uh, Revelation. Uh, what am I missing? Well, She Ra, if you throw She Ra. Revelation. In well, Revelation. Let's not count Shira, but Revelation slash Revolution, and that new that one that we don't. Oh like. yeah, the one for the kids. Yeah, yeah, where they're like super deformed. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, I forgot about that one. I blocked that one from memory because I. I mean, I'm not gonna bash it if people like it. That's fine. I just don't like the designs. I just think they just weird looking. But that's my personal taste. Well, they they are they're they're super deformed, and it's just uh, it's just not my thing. Same, same. I'm with you. If somebody else likes it, that I have more power to them. Yeah. So what I thought we would do, um, I what I thought we would do is I'm I'm hoping this is the right video, um. We've got yeah. two, we got two videos by Spectre Creative here that um, he. Uh, I'm hoping this first one is the one that we saw a year, you know a couple years ago where he first makes the claim that Mattel doesn't own the rights to Masters of the Universe, and then he recently did a new video where I didn't watch it. Brian did, so I, I was saving it for this episode. I wanted to to get genuine reaction to it. Uh, where apparently he goes back and doubles down, like he, uh, explain it, Brian, because like I said, you watched it, I didn't. Basically, he said, he, that's where he explains that they had sold the rights and he gives the year and, um, basically says that they were dumping the rights to He-Man because they needed cash or something to that effect. Right. Which is funny because companies usually don't come off of intellectual properties that make them any kind of money. No. Well, I mean that that would be like <coughs> Pokemon saying that their older Pokemon characters aren't generating cash, so they're going to get rid of them, which they won't do. See, what I want to know is, uh, and I'm going to throw it up on screen. I'm going to go ahead and, and throw it up here. Uh, this is his about section on YouTube. Uh, it says uh, it's a nationally recognized consulting firm led by 25-plus year toy maker Scott Toy Guru, however you say his last name. I'm not going to butcher it by trying to pronounce it. Uh, we are the only consumer product consulting firm that specializes in helping clients develop new product that enhances the emotional connection between product and consumer. Whew, ever heard of a comma? Uh, Spectre Creative also specializes in helping you add toy edit qualities to scripts and content to develop better selling consumer product. And then he's got his website. Videos on our channel feature insights into the toy industry as well as behind the scenes reviews of many of the toy lines. Scott has been a brand manager on Ma including Masters Universe Classics, He Man, DC Universe Classics, and many more. Okay, all right, so that kind of answers the question that I wanted to, to pose. Uh, I wanted to ask is, you know, he claims to have been a brand manager on Masters Universe for 10 years which I'm not saying he yeah. wasn't, but I wanted to know what 10 years. Now, if he was a brand manager on Masters Universe back in the 80s, um, first of all, 
from my recollection, I don't think that Masters of the Universe lasted 10 years in the 80s. I think it kind of went out around 87, 88, didn't it? It lasted until 1980, from 82 to 88, I believe. What I was thinking, I was thinking it was believe- right around there, yeah. It, it's um, either 88 or 89 because New Adventures came out, I, if I'm not mistaken, 91. in 1990. Yeah, I, yeah. Thought, I thought that was 90 right. or 91. Um, so, so that obviously throws that out the window. But I was going to say, if he yeah. was the brand manager during the 80s, yeah, maybe he might have some more insight into all of this stuff going on. I mean, I'm not saying he doesn't know anything. I'm not calling him out and saying everything he says is a lie and full of shit. I'm just saying I don't understand why he's trying to tell people this about copyrights because it just doesn't make sense. But the point being, he was the, the, the brand manager during the classics era, like when they were doing Master Universe Classics, which if you're unfamiliar... And Brian, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm, I believe that was a very specific line that wasn't sold in stores. It was a direct-to-consumer type thing. Yes. Okay. So, yes, it was definitely more direct-to-consumer than anything else. So not like it is to uh, back in the 80s and today where you can go, well depending on where you live, I guess, you go to your local Walmart or Target and pick up a Masters of the Universe figure. Around here, you fucking can't, but that's another story. Yeah. You ain't kidding. I've been looking for certain figures for a while now, and outside of Moss Man, you can't find shit. Okay. Well, I've got this other video pulled up, and I say we kind of watch it... um, May not watch the whole thing, or I may edit some parts out. So, you know, but I just want to talk about it while we watch it because I'm hoping this is the right video. If it's not, we'll stop and just go to the new one. But that's what we wanted to talk about today was uh, this guy talking about, um, you know, all the copyright stuff and, and why we think it's dangerous for misinformation to be out there. Yes. All right, here we go. Hey, Masters of the Universe and toy fans, welcome back to the Spectra Creative Channel. I'm Scott Toy Guru Nightlick. I was the brand manager. Nightlick, okay, you're Nightlick, whatever. For about ten years, <coughs> makes it about you know like twenty five percent of the brand's total life. And in that time, I've picked up quite a lot of knowledge about the brand. And in today's video, we're going to tackle a subject that is both confusing and confusing: who owns the rights? to He-Man and the Masters of the Universe, or just Masters of the Universe, or She-Ra, Princess of Power, or however you wanted to find the brand. The rights to this brand are, for lack of a better word, headache producing. It is a twisted, convoluted schematic of companies buying companies, selling off IP, selling off brand rights, selling off parts of brand rights. Needless to say, uh, sometimes I hate, I could even be completely wrong on this, but I'm going to. Okay. All right. I'm just going to stop right there. Uh, he even says he could be completely wrong. Okay. That's fine. Uh, I will give him credit for at least saying, Hey, you know, I could be wrong. Um, you know, at least, at least he's not saying I'm a hundred percent right. Uh, I just, we'll continue on any thoughts so far. So far, no, I, I'm with you. Okay. All right. At least he did give himself a, a uh, an out. Right, right. So uh, we'll see if that comes back in his rebuttal video later on. I'm, I'm curious because, like I said, I haven't watched that one. So here we go. I'm going to try to put the pieces together the best that I can with the best information I have, knowing that I haven't been at Mattel in over five years and things may have changed. All right, so for starters, it's a mess. Let's just start it right there, and no ifs, ands, or buts. There's absolutely 
no way to define the ownership of the Masters of the Universe brand without first admitting that it is a confusing pile of bleep. All right, so let's jump in. If you Google who owns Masters of the Universe, it will say that it's owned by Mattel. But Google may also be confusing this with who created Masters of the Universe. And Google's definitely not right here. And that is absolutely factual. While Mattel has definitely had its fair share of lawsuits... Okay, again, I'm going to stop right there. And I'm going to pull something back up on the screen really fast. Here we go. I know Brian can't see it because I'm not sharing this screen. But right there, back of the card, 2022 says Mattel masters the universe and associated trademarks and trade are owned by Mattel. Okay. So legally, and I'm no lawyer or anything, I would think that legally they couldn't put that on their packaging on their product. If it wasn't binding as far as, uh, the law, I mean, I could be wrong. And on, uh, on King Keldor's package that I'm holding right now, yeah. It says the same thing except the copyright date of 2023. Okay. So 2022, 2023, we're barely into 2024. This is February. As of recording this, February the 24th. Uh, so, you know, we're just two months into 2024. So 2022 and 2023 uh, on both packaging, it says that yes, uh, Mattel owns it. So, um, he can claim Google is wrong all he wants to. That's that's perfectly fine, but we'll see what he has to say. Over the years with different people, the ownership of the brand and the idea that it's in question, well, that goes back to intellectual property and how intellectual property works. And this is all information out there in the public domain. I'm not giving away anything proprietary. So to understand how intellectual property works, it's important to... Uh, we paused. Morse is proof. Well, I, I was going to ask said, that myself. He said, he said it's out there. Where? Where is it at? If, there's, if you have proof of this, why do you not share the proof? Instead of just sitting there going, I'm right, you're wrong. I don't know. I, I I'm wondering if he, if he meant that um, what he's saying about Masters of the Universe is out there and easily found, or if what he's getting ready to tell us about copyright law is easily found out there. I don't know, but I, I find it kind of uh, counter and uh, counterproductive for him to sit here and say, "Well, you can Google uh, who owns the trademark and copyright for Masters of the Universe," but Google's wrong. But I'm going to tell you about copyright law, and you can Google it. It's easily found. Out there. It's kind of hypocritical, you know. I mean, yeah, uh, that's just my take on it. I mean, yes, I'm sure Google can be wrong. Uh, I mean, it's it's not Google's fault. Google's just a fucking search engine. It's whatever is on the internet. But uh, I, I really want to see what he has to say about this because. Um, 1982, well, I'm going to go as far as to say, I think in 1980 is when they started working on the idea of Masters of the Universe. And uh, they really... 81, I can't... 80, 81, something like that. But they really wanted to make a toy line based on Conan the Barbarian. And they couldn't secure the rights. Correct me if I'm wrong. So that was part of it. It was also also part of it was some of the Mattel execs actually, you know, saw Conan the Barbarian. Right. <laughs> and they were I like, mean, it's a little bottom. Uh, um maybe we shouldn't make a toy line out of Conan the Barbarian. Well, you know, I mean I I love Conan. I, I like the comics, I like the novels, I like the movies. Um so, I mean, it was natural that I would like He-Man as a kid, but that's neither here nor there. Obviously, I like He-Man, or, you know, and you like He-Man, or we wouldn't be making this video. Um, but yeah. Anyway, we'll go on and we'll see what Spectre Creative, what toy guru boy here has to say about copyrights. He's going to edumacate us because, uh, you know, none of us know anything.
understand that it can be divided up into categories. You can have intellectual property that's entertainment and intellectual property that's physical objects. And sometimes they can intermix or be separated. So I don't... Well, Duh. in the 80s, uh, pretty much everything <laughs> that came out as a toy line uh, was intermixed, buddy. I mean, you should know this shit. I mean, uh, Transformers, G.I. Joe, Star Wars, well, Star Wars 70s, 80s, but Masters of the Universe, Ninja Turtles. Yeah, I mean... It had, Rider. A, it had a comic <laughs> or a TV show or both. So... I mean, I'm sure that, I, I know there was toy lines out there that didn't have shows or comics like uh, shit. What was it? Uh, it wasn't Sectars. It was um, Star Ears. No, Sectars. Star Ears had a comic. They had the mini comics, or did they have the four issue mini series? I can't remember. They had a four issue mini series at Marvel, which basically destroyed the entire storyline. Right. Yeah, because they like resolved the problem at the end, and like, well, where do we go from here? <laughs> Spoiler. <Yeah. laughs> Yeah, they, I, I remember reading that last issue. I was like, uh... Well... Uh, that just basically ruined the entire story right there. Yeah, well, um... I guess I can put my toys away. I don't need to play anymore. Problem resolved. <laughs> <laughs> guess what, Mom? I don't want any more of those. You know, like... <laughs> anyway. All right, here we I, go. Have, I have no proof of it, but I think that well, that's probably part of what killed the toy line. <laughs> I think you're probably right, man, because, I mean, if you think about it, um, like I said, most every toy line in the 80s that actually is memorable to this day had a cartoon, a TV show, a comic, a video game, something, or all of the above. A segment on um, Deception of a Generation. I am Skeletal, master of the universe. He's an occultic that hero, had a cult you know. Yes, that had a cult overtones all over the place, but it yeah. didn't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the clip. Oh, Lord. Okay, all right, here we go. I don't think anyone is doubting that Mattel created the Masters of the Universe brand in the early 1980s. And it's all started off with toys and mini comics, eventually branching out to TV. Now, if you want to know who physically created He-Man, there's a great video on my channel where I cover that in detail. But for now, let's just all agree. Or you can go straight to the source and go to Netflix and watch the episode on uh, the toys that made us where they actually interview the people that created Masters of the Universe. Uh, I would highly recommend watching that instead of his video. Yeah. That the Masters of the Universe brand was created at Mattel by Mattel employees, and then eventually Filmation came along and made entertainment and had some of the entertainment rights to the property as part of the deal and had basically carte blanche to do a lot of what they wanted. Mattel didn't have as much control in the Filmation series as later IP deals had later on with other companies. Kind of non-traditional, if you will. Uh, pause that. Filmation studio. I, hey, uh, I disagree. I disagree with what he just said. I, I kind of thought he said you might. He said Mattel had virtually no control over what Filmation did. Basically... According to what he just said, Filmation had full rights to do whatever they felt like doing. Right. That's what I took from it. There's a problem with that, though. Okay. If Mattel had carte blanche and the deal was so bad, like he said it was, then how come Mattel, how come have, um, Mattel got the rights to Orko, King Randor, and um, the Sorceress? Yeah. Because uh, Filmation, they created them, didn't they? They were all created by Filmation. Yeah, that's what I thought. Marlena as well, so if I'm I, not mistaken, I, right? Yeah, but they, they were the ones that got toys. Right, right. In the, Well, at least in the vintage line, Marlena eventually got a classics figure. 
I'm hoping that she gets a yeah, uh, a lot of uh, whatever I uh, origins. I hope she gets an origins figure. I'm thinking that the Eternos playset may come with rant with her. That would be cool. Be a great way to get her out. Yeah. But anyway. Yeah, I was I was thinking that right when you said pause. I'm like, oh, I think Brian's going to have something to say about this. All right, so here we go. We continue. Leo had way more control. Mattel still had control of the action figures, and the action figure category was something that remained at Mattel, and it continued to make even to this day. This video being recorded in August of 2020. Well, it's almost September. It's the last day of August. All right, so now let's go through the ownership. So Mattel sells the entertainment rights to Masters of the Universe to Hallmark. Hallmark then sells the rights to Entertainment Rights, which sells the rights to Classic Media. The live action rights are currently with Sony. So Sony is a stupid... Okay, I'm going to redact something. Uh, I fucked up. I said Universal. It's Sony. I apologize. I thought it was Universal. I did too. Uh, I, he mentioned Universal somewhere. He mentioned Universal somewhere in there. Okay, I I'm totally, sure he does. totally. I could be wrong. I, I, I probably I could be a hundred percent wrong. I think I probably totally fucked that up. I, I was for some reason I was thinking Universal. Like it could be Sony. I should have researched that before we started this, but I was actually excited to get this going because we've wanted to cover this for quite a while. Yeah. Studio has just the live action rights similar to the way they have rights to Spider-Man. Now the original live action. See, uh, but does Sony own Spider-Man? According to his, his logic, yes. I think Marvel might have something, especially the mouse. I think Disney might have something to say about that. Yes, I understand Sony has the rights to make the movies, or at least did. I think maybe it's being contested now because uh, that Madam Web movie did not do very well. Uh, but it uh, yeah. can't. What, what? It can't be te- contested. Why? Disney bought Sony, I believe. Did they? No. <laughs> no, they bought Fox. Yeah, they, they bought, bought yeah, they bought Fox. I was gonna say no, Sony's way too big to yeah, no, no, no. Uh, no. I was gonna say that okay, would mean so yeah, that yeah, that would mean that Disney owns the PlayStation and basically the uh the uh, uh rights to Blu rays because Sony it was the first company to produce Blu rays. I mean, yeah, they would they would wow, that would be quite the accu- accus ah, accusation shit, I can't talk. Acquisition by Disney. Jesus Christ, they would be a powerhouse then. Yeah. All right, here we go. Uh, movie with Dolph Lundgren, directed by Godard. That is Lundgren. By Warner Brothers, which is the studio. That Not Lundgren. Canon, which <laughs> is the uh, production studio that originally made the Gary Godard film. So that's a whole other thing altogether and not related to Sony's current live action rights. But the original is under Warner Brothers. All right. So where are we now? It's obviously that the rights have passed along to multiple companies, but we are not done yet. So Classic Media, which manages to, which, which is the owner of the rights, and actually during the time that Classics is coming out, is the time period when Classic Media owns the entertainment rights to the brand. Well, for those of you who collected the Masters of the Universe Classics figures, you can easily... Okay, I'm going to skip forward through this um, because I don't want him coming no, wait, back. Wait, wait, and... let, me, let me... I'm curious to see what he's going to say here. Okay, All right. uh, I may have to edit some of this out because I don't want him coming and forward. filing a copyright claim on us for playing his whole video. But we are doing a... Uh, we're talking about this. We're we're you know not just want play replaying his video. We're deconstructing what he's saying. Just you know, so the YouTube gods don't throw the ban hammer down on us again. They love doing that shit. Yeah, they do. Yeah, art. Okay, here we go. 
quickly look at any of them and turn them over and see TM and copyright Mattel on the bottom of the box. Ooh. And yes, that's true. The toy is TM and copyright to Mattel, but every single uh, classics ma action figure, ma action figure, action figure that we made, Mattel paid a royalty to classic media because classic media had the rights to the property, which also. I'm going to steal a line oh, from you, Brian. I'm going to steal a line from you. Are you ready? Yeah. Where's your proof? Show your work. They Basically, from what he just said, and you can skip, that, that's what I needed right there. From what he just said, Mattel paid a copy, uh, paid a licensing fee for their own product. For their own creation. Yeah, that doesn't make sense. I mean, if we're wrong, if we're wrong, then I will I will admit it. I will say, okay, yeah, we were wrong. But I mean, if, if Spectre Creative, if Spectre Creative want, if he sees this and he he wants to reach out to us and say, hey, let's go on Discord. Let's the three of us talk this out. I want to explain it to you. Hey, I'm all for that. We'll set aside time and we'll meet with him and we'll talk. And if he can explain it to us, because I would literally, I really like to ask questions about. You know, I, I, I really want to ask questions because I'm interested in this kind of thing. Uh, if we're wrong, I'll be like, bro, cool. I apologize. We're wrong. But as of right now, I'm not seeing any proof of what he's saying. Yeah. But Same here. I, I, I think that that's enough of that video. I mean, we, we pretty much got what we wanted out of it. Um, unless you I want agree. to go a little further. No, I, I think that was pretty much it. Okay. Um, <coughs> Excuse me. No, you're good. You're good. Uh, I, I, I honestly think that we've got enough for this episode because I was going to say that we should uh, do both videos in one episode, but I'm thinking maybe we should split it up into two parts. Maybe next week. I agree. We, we can go over his rebuttal, his 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 video talking about this, because I'm really curious as to what he has to say in that. Uh, I just, you know, wanted to watch this one. Uh, sorry, guys, we were going to make it one video, but I think it'd be better to split it up into two parts. That way we have time to stew and think about this and uh maybe do a little bit more research I because I want to track down stuff online and see if I can find out if what he's saying is true, if this other company really does hold the master rights to Masters of the Universe. Yeah, I agree. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to bookmark his video. I'm not subscribing to him, but I'm going to bookmark it. That way we'll be able to find it easily enough for next week. There, that's done. Um, anything else about this, Brian? Because I'm really confused. I'm really confused on on this, what he's saying. Yeah, no, I, I'm pretty confused on it myself. Hey, like I, I said. I can't think of anything else to say. I mean, you know, we don't have a huge following. Um would like for you guys that watch our videos to subscribe. That would be very helpful to us. But, uh, I mean, he's got a much bigger audience than we do. Uh, but uh, we have yeah. a lot of passion for what we do. we got a lot of passion for collecting and all the stuff we grew up with. And it's not that we're trying to necessarily uh, steamroll this guy or you know, uh, get people to, uh, turn against him or give him negative comments or feedback or anything. I just want more proof as to what he's saying. Yeah. Yeah, I do too. I, I would really <coughs> proof goes a long way. Yeah. I mean, if he could just show something, you know, some kind of document, Anything. Even, even if it's online, where it shows that this company actually owns the the master rights to the product, then I'd be like, "All right, cool, all right, no problem. I was right, or I was wrong. You were right. Cool, all right." Yep. Well, in closing, do you have anything to add? 
Not really. I, uh, I'm curious to see what comes of this. I am too. And if you guys out there are watching this, if you like it and you want us to continue looking at uh, toy YouTubers, you know, whether it be Master Universe, G.I. Joe, Transformers, whatever, let us know. Uh, because there's several people I have watched in the Transformers community. Some I like, some I dislike, some I really dislike. Same thing with G.I. Joe. Uh, Brian, that's more Brian's area. He watches a lot of YouTube G.I. Joe guys. So, I mean, there's there's a lot of things we could say about some of these people. Now, not saying we're any better, you know, or that our production values are better, yeah. that we have better content, but, um, you know, it's fun sometimes to watch other people. Yep. All right. And yeah. uh, so if you got nothing else, Brian, I think we'll call it there. Yeah, I don't have anything else. All right. Well, uh, again, everybody out there watching our videos and subscribing, we appreciate it. Love you guys. I uh, hope to you continue your support. Thanks a lot. And we'll see you next time. See you next time. Yay.